Hey guys, this is Brian from Wooden Creations. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to build the new E4 CNC from Bob CNC. Also, I'll be upgrading this E3 into the new E4 as they're the same instructions. During disassembly, magnetic trays are always helpful to hold loose screws. If you don't have one, an old container such as this one will do a great job just as well. A screwdriver will work to disassemble the CNC but a driller impact will make the job go a lot faster. You notice I removed the YZ assembly and set it aside. It's because I've already upgraded this E3 CNC with the newer upgraded YZ assembly. This assembly is the exact same one for the E4, and being that I'm doing the upgrade to E4, this part won't need to be rebuilt. If you've purchased the E4 as a brand new kit, the E4 instructions step you through the process right off the bat. I'll put a link in the description of the assembly video I did on putting one together. If you're doing the upgrade from the E3 to the E4, you'll need to save all your nuts, bolts, bearings, stepper motors, router, and even the controller, as it'll all be rebuilt in the new larger E4. Bob will send you the extra parts to complete that set. The wood, metal rods, belts from your old E3 won't be used in the building of the new E4, but it doesn't hurt to hang on to the parts until completion of the E4 is complete. Before you begin your install of the E4 CNC, I suggest doing a quick prep of the wood with a protective layer. I use this Rust-Oleum lacquer because it's cheap and very quick drying. Dry time is around 15 minutes or less, and then I hit it with a homemade block made out of 220 sandpaper. When it comes to poly spray, I usually lean away from that as I find it takes a quite a bit longer before it will allow you to dry and allow you to sand it. If you're wanting to paint your pieces, I suggest a Krylon brand of paint as it dries much quicker than a Rust-Oleum brand of paint. For the project, I bought this plastic paint sprayer from Rust-Oleum and found it, it's worth its weight in gold as it does an excellent job of allowing you to spray the lacquer or paint without allowing your finger to have finger fatigue. Another very cool tool that I found for this project is this magnetic telescoping magnet. The way that it works is you take a nut stick it on the end here then you'll allow you to slip it into the slot which then you can then put your screw in there all right when adding screws to your CNC we're gonna to want to use some Loctite this is the thread locker blue 242 you prefer to use this over the red the red is supposedly permanent and this one will actually allow you to back it out if you needed to but it'll hold it in tight now then to add this to every single screw is going to be a little tedious. So I've come up with a quick way to help you add that and today I'm going to show you how. I've got this water bottle here. If we take off the cap, it's the right diameter to be able to put that screw in there and get a little bit of thread locker on it. Now then, the problem with this is, is sometimes it's going to want to move around like that. We don't want that to happen when we've got our Loctite in there. So if we take a little bit of duct tape, tear off a piece, and we roll that up we can now place this down and if you do it a little bit of an angle it'll be perfect for holding your Loctite go ahead and take a little Loctite squeeze that out it's a perfect amount then just take this and it only needs to be on the tip of there that is all that is going to be on your nut the first thing we need to do is build the YZ assembly kit if you're building the E4 from scratch or upgrading your E3 and never had upgraded your YZ assembly, you can watch my step-by-step -step video on upgrading the YZ assembly kit. I'll leave a link in the description of that video showing you how to build it. With that said, let's continue on with the build right after that step. As I started building the frame assembly, I found I could work faster if the nuts and bolts were separate as I grabbed for them. I found by swirling the extension magnet in the mechanics tray works surprisingly well at capturing lots of nuts and only a few bolts, making this process of separation extremely fast. Here I'm assembling two X-rail support sides. Then come the corner braces and X large corner supports. Next, we add the X cable mounts to the frame mid supports. Now it's time to wiggle and place our X-Rail support assembly to the completed X-Cable mounts.
Repeat the process for the matching side. Now attach the two remaining mid-frame supports, followed by the two end frame supports. As we start building the gantry, note the position of the gantry mount. It's the piece that looks like Pac-Man. We'll mount the Arduino controller to this piece later in the build. Now, we mount the four gantry back braces to the two gantry back supports and tighten with screws. Now mount the assembly on the gantry frame and secure with screws. Flip the gantry frame assembly over and insert the seven Y-rail supports. Now attach the Y-stepper motor mount and the belt idler mount to the gantry. With a bit of a wiggle, it's time to attach both gantry side frames. When it comes to attaching the SG20U bearings, there's a certain order we need to follow. Bolt through the bearing, bearing flange side towards the nut, then washer, then through the wood hole, then washer, and then nut. Repeat this process for all eight bearings. When it comes to installing the idler bearing, both flanges need to be outward as shown here. A nut is tight against the bearing, then washer, then through the hole and a washer and nut on the other side. The three idler bearings are shown here. Now we slip in the gantry side brace and side support. There's a total of three stepper motors we need to attach. They are listed as X1, Y and X2. When attaching the three G2 pulleys, you'll find a provided Allen wrench to tighten the two set screws on each pulley. The belt will rest on this pulley, then go over to the bearing near it. It's necessary to try and line up the pulley and bearings the best you can, so the belt will run from one to the other centered. Now we need to install the X and Y stepper motor home switches on the same side of the gantry. After getting both switches mounted, start running the wires through the gantry holes. Next, we want to label the switches as well as the stepper motor so it will be easier to plug in later. I did this on my A3 and it worked great. I label each cable with a permanent marker on the blue tape and I have yet to ever have one fall off. Bob provides spiral cable wrap to give your spaghetti of cables a professional look, as well as keep them safely together. When wrapping the home switch wires, wrap five or six times around the stepper motor cable, then wrap one time around the home switch. This method will cut down on the chance of false triggers from electrical noise. With our cables in order, it's time to move on to the gantry install instructions. We first start by screwing on the X-rail stops then slowly lowering the gantry over the main frame. Before inserting the rail rods, I highly advise giving them a quick clean. I'm using this bow shield for rust and corrosion prevention, but a wipe down with an oily rag and then wiping back off for sure will add some longevity to your rails. Carefully insert the upper rod rail through the main frame, making sure to go under the pair of SG20U bearings on the gantry. Now do the same on the opposite side. With the top rails in place, it's time to insert the lower rails, making sure to go over the bottom pair of the SG20U bearings. I found trying to push the rod in straight didn't work as well as twisting and pushing the rod at the same time. Off camera, I gave all the bearings that ride on the rails after this a snug tightening. A 
It's now time for the Y assembly to be mounted to the gantry. Make sure your bearings are somewhat loose and this will slide right on. Next, it's time to attach the Y rail stops to prevent the rails from coming out. I notice the four total screws used on these rail stops are much longer than any other screws. These are the M4 by 25 screws. Alright, I'm going to take you through the instructions of how to put the belt on. Um, this is on the side here. This is the front of our CNC as you can see here. So if we look down here at the belt, the belt, if you look at the groove side right here, groove side down. It's going to always stay down. Even on this side over here, groove side is down after it goes through all the gears over here. The first thing that we're going to do is, is we're going to take this belt and it'll go through the very top hole here. We've got three holes. It'll go through the very top and it'll come out the top and it'll go into our piece here then go back into the middle one and then back into the middle and that is how we'll do that and then that bottom hole on this side this is the front again so you can see on the front that one is not going to get used we will put a zip tie here and we'll tighten that down and then we'll cut off the access so you're going to have access to this now then don't cut it off until we get all the way through here so the way this is going to work is is this belt I'll kind of back up so we can watch it it comes all the way down here watch my finger it will actually go over top of this geared pulley here so if you can see in here I've got a geared pulley it goes over the top of it and then it wraps back underneath it and then it'll go over top of this pulley so it comes over the top of that geared pulley and it goes back around underneath and then it goes under that that smooth pulley and then it comes all the way back down and all the way back down here we'll follow it and we'll go down into the bottom hole the one we did not use on the opposite side go in the bottom because it's now lower and it'll come out this side we'll just go ahead and come out of here and then I stuck it back in here now then this one we'll actually put a zip tie here and then cut off this excess. We don't need all this. So zip tie that tight whenever you get all that set up and then you guys are done. Making sure I had both ends with plenty of slack, I add zip ties and cut off the ends of the belt. The belt will be fairly tight, but it also has a bit of play to it. All right, so the very last one is our gantry belt. The way this one works is, is just go ahead and run it in between this gap back here. We're gonna have it with the face of the belt down, so the, uh, the rigid side down. And uh, just go ahead and run it over here, over that idler, and this one over here, this bearing. And then from there, just try to equal them up until you get it to where they're about half and half, and they both meet in the center. All right, that's pretty close. Now we'll just have to go in the back and loosen the screws back there and put those in, and we should be good. So let's go ahead and take a, a view from the back here. When it comes to putting the belt in its retainer, it can be a little stressful, but needle nose pliers and a little patience will help it slide right in. So if you've loosened the screws that hold the belt in on that belt retainer, you're probably going to need something like this. This is a seven millimeter socket on an extension. I can come in from the other side here and I'm able to then hold onto the nut as I go ahead and use a screwdriver to tighten it down. Now that the belt's in, we can celebrate and get on to the next step. We need to tighten the idler pulley shown here to put tension on the belt. Bob included a very handy wooden tool that helped get this job done. Next is time to zip tie the controller on. And you'll see the USB port here, and then here's our power port. So we'll put it facing this way. And we'll use zip ties to zip tie this on. After zip tying all four holes, I then cut off the excess. It's time for cable mounts. 
a quick attachment of your top and bottom cable mounts, followed by the side cable mounts. I found the top cable mount to be very necessary for everyone. But the placement of which side you want to put your side cable mount on the gantry, well that comes down to which side you want to run your cables down. We well, could try to watch me plug all these cables in, but it's hard to see around all the blue tags and my big fingers. This diagram is in the instructions and shows you where to plug in each one. The one thing to remember is that the X1 has the red cable on the opposite side of all the others. With the power adapter unplugged, screw the red wire into the plus, which is located on this one, on the bottom. Then screw the opposite colored wire into the negative, which happens to be on the top. Next, plug in your USB cable. The final step of your brand new E4 is putting on the spoil board. You do this by inserting a nut and putting blue tape on both sides of the nut to keep it in place. I have to say, I was a little skeptical on how well this idea of all this blue tape would be since there were so many screws. But you know what? It was fantastic. I only had two screws get a little cattywampus on me, but I was able to correct those from underneath. Bob has provided you a handful of steel ball bearings. These are used for spacers between each board for placement when gluing the T-slots on the spoil board. When it comes to wood glue, I'm a fan of the Type Bond 2, but Type Bond Original works just as well and it dries clear. The T-slot works as so. The bolt will screw into the metal T-base, then you'll slide it down the T-slot. Then tighten the wing nut onto your workpiece. It's helpful to have a smaller wooden hold down behind it for better leverage. All right, so our test of the E4, we go ahead and open up UGS, Universal G-Code Sender. Click OK to the message. And up here I'm on port COM3 and the BOD is 115200. And then I'll just go ahead and hit the connect button. When I do, the first thing you'll get is an alarm. And the way you fix that is, is you need to go up here and hit the home machine. I click that. And your CNC should always come back to this corner. So if it's going the wrong way, it means that your stepper motors are, are going the wrong way. What you need to do is change the cable on the back of it. Just flip the cable from the opposite. So if the red cord is on that way or your red cable, just flip it to the opposite side and then it'll go the correct way. So that is the correct way that you would home your CNC. Everything is absolutely working. It's, it's extremely smooth. And now I can take it and uh, we'll move it forward. This is in inches. You'll notice how smooth that goes. That's the Y plus. Next, I'll go ahead and take it uh, with the X plus. As you can see, I don't have a bit in there, but if I did, I would uh, I'd get it in the location that I'd want to cut in. If we're cutting, we would typically put it down here, or you can center it so it would be perfectly centered on the board. But for now, we'll just pretend it. I'll give it a Z minus. That'll take it down. Now it's on inches in here in UGS, so I'll switch over to millimeters and I'll take it down in smaller steps. If we had a bit in there, we would zero it by taking it all the way down to the board and having the bit touch the board. When we do, then we would go ahead and hit the reset zero. And now it tells the software that we're at zero and that is where we would start from. And then we would just trace out the picture on the screen. We would just go around, make sure we wouldn't hit any of the hold downs. But uh, other than that, the E4 went together awesome. It's a very fun build. It's very simple. The directions are excellent. So highly suggest everyone check it out and uh, make one. They're amazing. So thank you guys for watching the video. All right, so that concludes the E4 CNC from Bob CNC. This thing is a beast. I love how large it is. It's gonna be nice for doing larger signs. And uh, yeah, if you guys are interested in getting a CNC, highly suggest this one. The, uh, the assembly was not hard at all. It, uh, it went together very easily. The instructions were very clear. 
Um, very good company and awesome support. So thank you, Bob, and uh, everyone there that works for Bob CNC. We really appreciate it. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to get started. So thank you guys for watching. Let's compare Bob's E4 CNC to Bob's E3 CNC. The E4 is now a much larger bed. It's got about a 25 by 25 area of cutting. The E3 is a smaller bed. It's about a 17 by 17 area of cutting. The E4 now comes in a T-slot track, so you can move your hole downs to wherever you wish. But uh, overall, they're the exact same in reference to everything else. I almost forgot the best piece. This is like putting the star on the Christmas tree. There we go. I want to mention one more thing before I end this video, and that's that I sell a product called the Bit Duster. Now you may have previously seen it on the E3 CNC's, but it not only works on the E3, it also works on the all new E4 CNC. The way that it works is this router will exhaust air as it's working, and that air will get rerouted through these tubes and blow down onto the bit. When it does, it'll clear the sawdust about six to eight inches away, allowing you to be able to see what you're cutting. Not only can you see that, you can see the depth of cut, if there's any tabs that may get cut and the piece tries to pop up, you'll be able to see that and stop your CNC so it doesn't hit it. Also, sometimes a hold down may get in the way and you'll be able to see that hold down as, uh, as it doesn't block the view. Sometimes a dust shoe might kind of do that, so it does a great job of that. Also, on the bit duster, you can change your bit with your wrenches and you don't have to take off the bit duster. It's very easily changeable, so it all works great for that. I do sell it in three different versions if you're interested. Uh, I sell one in a 3D version where all the letters are three-dimensional. I also sell a two-dimensional version where just all the letters are flat. And on the 2D and the 3D, they're already glued. All you need to do is take these screws and screw it onto the front of the uh, CNC right here, and then you're done. I do sell one more version. This is the assembly version. You assemble it at home. Uh, it comes with lock nuts and screws, and you put it together. It takes about three minutes. Uh, you can use glue if you wish. It doesn't need it. It's got lock nuts, but uh, it's an option if you guys wish to do that. I'll leave a link in the description of where you can purchase a bit duster as well as see a video of it in action. And uh, overall, they're the exact same. Uh, me, the margarita. Hello.